In this video, we will look at some examples of uh, estimating limit of detection. Here we have data collected from spiked samples of tomatoes that contain a pesticide called imazalil. Uh, so we have measured uh, each sample four times. Uh, so the first thing uh, to look at when we start estimating limit of detection is whether the data we are using is linear and uh, scatastic, uh, heteroscatastic. So let's look at the calibration graph. Here we can see that probably the highest, two of the highest calibration levels are heteroscatastic because their variance is significantly larger than for the other uh, calibration levels. So we can remove these calibration levels. And uh, now still we can see that the third uh, highest calibration level gives significantly larger variance than the other ones. So let's remove one more calibration level. Now here we can see that the data looks more or less linear and uh, homoscedastic. However, you sh should not really trust uh, too much uh, this kind of visual evaluation uh, of a calibration graph. So we also are going to calculate absolute residuals for this data. I have already calculated the slope and intercept values. Uh, for the data where the three of the highest calibration levels are removed. And now let's find the absolute residuals. So from the plot of uh, the absolute residuals, we can see that um, the data is most probably linear because none of the data uh, on any of the calibration levels significantly varies uh, onto one side or the other uh, from the zero. But we can also see that it might still be uh, the data might still be somewhat uh, heteroscedastic. However, we don't want to remove too many of the calibration levels uh, because then we would have very little data to use to calculate the limit of detection. And we can see that right now the highest calibration level does not have the uh, largest standard deviation. So let's calculate limit of detection right now for this data. However, uh, we should keep in mind that this data is might be somewhat heteroscedastic. So to calculate limit of detection, uh, let's first calculate, use the linest function to calculate some of the parameters of the calibration function. find the parameters and when you use a linest function you can find slope on this side intercept here below intercept is standard deviation of intercept and below uh, standard deviation of intercept, we can find the standard deviation of residuals. Now, the first approach uh, that we will use to estimate limit of detection 
uh, is suggested by ICH and uh, it uses the standard deviation of the residuals. It multiplies through uh, standard deviation for residuals by 3.3 and as we divide it by s with a slope we get the mm, uh, value in uh, concentration scale. So this is uh, milligrams per kilogram right now. And we get this kind of a value. So I have already found uh, the standard deviation and mean of intensity values for blank uh, samples and uh, for uh, fortified samples at a certain concentration. We can now use from this data uh, the uh, other approaches to estimate the limit of detection. Here. can see that this is significantly uh, lower value than for the first approach. This could be because uh, our data is still somewhat heteroscedastic and at lower concentrations uh, the st standard deviation is lower. Now that we can use the third approach to estimate limit of detection. For this, we can use the same equation and now here we can see that uh, this last approach gives the largest um, uh, LOD estimate right now. So, we suggest using actually this first approach to estimate limit of detection because it's uh, simple. It's uh, most of the case quite conservative, meaning it will give you uh, high limit of detection values. And it does not uh, need uh, replicate measurement that uh, replicate measurements at uh, different concentrations like the other approaches that we used. The other approaches need to uh, uh, replicate measurements at least at the blank or at the fortified levels. So hopefully this video has given you some uh, more clear um, understanding of how to really uh, calculate limit of detection from data in, an, in Excel. Thank <laughs> you.